Hello and welcome to this week's Vox session and today's session is going to be featuring Big Bang Music and their relationship with the sensational John Woff. Now it's my absolute pleasure to introduce John to you today. He's one of the world's greatest saxophone players and has recently come off a world tour with the 1975. But perhaps more importantly for us at Big Bang Music, we're delighted to be promoting his brand new jazz improvisation book. And we're going to be talking about that with John himself throughout the course of these next 10 minutes or so. If the listeners at home are interested in what we're talking about, if you want to send us a message, we'll do our best to get that through to John at some point and he might even be able to offer you some one-on-one -on -one advice about where you need to go. So ladies and gentlemen, with um, no greater ado, I'd like to introduce the amazing Mr. John Woff. <laughs> Hello John, it's nice to see you. Thank you for being here today. Oh, of course, no, thank you for having me. It's, um, it's lovely to see you. It's great, man. And you know, whereabouts are you dialing in from at the moment? I'm, in, I'm at home in London. Oh, that's very nice. I gather you've been working already today doing some jazz education, is that right? Uh, yes, I, I just got back um, uh, this afternoon from um, a, a, new, a very brand new music college called Resonance, Yeah. Uh, kind of outside of Birmingham. And they're so new to the extent where they have under 30 students on their entire, uh, wow. across the, their range of courses. And I think that's partly due to the, the whole COVID thing, um, but it was but it's a great place, amazing facilities, and very good um, uh, tutors and yeah. um, very good direction. So it was great to to go along and say hello. Oh, um, I think it's amazing. I mean, we we've known each other for a little bit now because uh, you were at university with one of our directors, a guy called Stuart McCrone, and you've done some work with some of our educational activities. But if it's all right with you, could you just give a bit of background on why you've um, created this product and developed the actual um, the jazz book? Uh, it'd be really useful for people at home. Yeah, um, well, I suppose music education has been a big part of my not only my career but my my childhood and general livelihood and life. And so, um, I've been a saxophone teacher and a music teacher for the past ten years, and I spend a lot of my time doing that in between tour stints and live performances and other sessions and so I suppose the book is very much a, a natural extension to that work and um, it partly came about just because I had like like everyone this year I had a lot of time on my hands and I was doing a lot of zoom tuition um, and remote teaching and I found that I was answering um, the same questions yeah um, in every lesson and um, and a lot of it was to do with having a fundamental understanding of how harmony is structured and how you use that understanding to to develop your own ideas um, and so and I think just over the course of the past 10 years I've accumulated different worksheets that I've made and yeah. I've, I've just found that I have a fairly set pattern on how I address improvisation and how I teach improvisation and a lot of it is based on very, very simple, fundamental principles. And the idea that once you understand um, a very basic concept, harmonically speaking, you can apply that understanding um, and your general school of thought to anything else, regardless of how complex it is. And so I suppose that's a running theme in, in the book. Um, yeah, I think that sounds great, actually, because um, what I've really understood and what I've seen and witnessed firsthand is that you've developed your pedagogy, your methodology for how to inspire people through understanding of the, the nuts and bolts of the harmony and the nuts and bolts of how it all fits together. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think, you know, from, from our perspective, the aspirations for this book would be that we think it's as a, a fundamental... Um, essential requirement for all of our students and for the people in the wider world to get their heads into this part of the music. I mean, do you, I'm assuming you're going to be using it all the time with your education. I would, I would imagine so, yeah. And if it's not directly from the book, the material is still going to be consistent regardless. And um, I suppose another thing is, is trying to cast aside the notion that if you, if you study a lot of theory and if, if that's a, a, a driving force behind your playing, then you're kind of playing music in a very numerical way, which isn't particularly inspiring, though. The idea behind this is that it, it combines an understanding with muscle memory. Mm. Um, and so given enough time and hard work, you're, you're not really thinking numerically at all. If anything, you're thinking far less. So you, you learn the content and this new material and all of the, 
the theory in order to essentially forget it when it yeah. comes to being creative. And so as much as it, you know, at face value, if you were to pick a page and just and delve into it, it would look like it was particularly analytical or <laughs> very methodical. But really is really when you just do the groundwork enough and begin using it creatively, you realize that you no longer have to think about music in a theoretical way. It, it, you begin to interpret it in, in a more of a conceptualized way, like shape and color or light and shade. And I suppose that's to do with muscle memory as much as it is to do with an understanding of theory. Oh man, I think it's amazing. In fact, I've got a, one of our big band associates down there, Tom. If Tom feels like opening up the book, and um, we'll have that on the screen as well, and we can maybe dive into a few bits about how the book works. And before we get there, I'm particularly I'm really interested in, you know, your journey and how you got to developing your the, the concepts of jazz education. Because I know you went to Leeds College of Music, and so you must have had some input from some other guys, quite inspirational guys. Did that? Did they? You know, were they a catalyst for how you began your th thought process? Or is this something that's just much bigger that you've learned on your travels around the world? Um, I think it's naturally both, a mm -hmm. bit of both. And I've been very lucky to have amazing teachers from when I first started playing music when I was a little boy and then through to music college. And um, the, I suppose the common thread amongst all of them and, and the common thread amongst their different approaches, although they're all very unique to to their own um, uh, ways of working. The common thread is that you, you, know, you can take on board the things that you love. You essentially you don't have to learn every single little bit of theory. You, you cherry pick the things that you love based on your taste in music, I suppose. Yeah. And I think that paired with just a, a very kind of liberal inspiration, a very, you know, I, I was constantly encouraged just to really play for the sake of playing. Yeah, you know, you learn as much as you can, but you, you know, you're there. To, you're playing music because you're expressing who you are. It should be a very freeing and very open um, process, and a, a very like an endeavor driven by inspiration and care and purpose and all of this stuff that really has nothing to do with a theory book. Um, but um, you know, it's just good to occasionally delve into some things that are fundamentally a part of the, the music that we play. Yeah, man, totally cool. Tom, if you wouldn't mind getting the cover up for the book, we'll talk about it a bit and how it all works. John, how long did it take you to put it together? I know you said you've been doing it for years with worksheets and things, but the actual process of putting the book together, you know, you know a couple of months? The, it took three months to write the first draft. Um, wow. And that was quite continuous work. I, I forced myself to take a break on weekends, but I was working you know, I would usually start around half eight, nine in the morning and finish maybe 12 hours later and only take breaks to like eat food. And yeah. even then I would more often than not, I would forget to eat. So it was a very immersive experience. And then once I'd submitted the first draft, it really felt like, right, well, I've, I, I at least have that. And then it's surprising how many things I found in it that were, no, it's not that they were incorrect. But I knew that I could improve upon. And so it really was a draft. And so yeah. it took maybe another, I think four months to make amendments to that and have revised versions. And so I think I started in early April and it was only maybe two weeks before, it was about three weeks ago when I submitted the final copy. Wow. Yeah, and it's a great, it's a great tone. So Tom has actually managed to upload the front cover of the book. I really like the image, John. Was that for, um, done by one of your friends or? Um, uh, I suppose a friend of a friend. So. Yeah. Uh, the, the guy who did the artwork is an artist called Jake Dubber. Yeah. And he does these very impressionistic sort of washes of color and very abstract form. And so I was introduced to him through a friend of mine called Ollie Bentley, who's a Leeds based graphic designer and also a really amazing saxophone player who was, we were in the same year together at music college and, um, and that who has since graduating has gone down the graphic design room yeah. as a, a studio and actually right next door to the college. Anyway, um, it was Ollie who introduced me to um, uh, to Jake, and th this image was brought up in and amongst a, a lot of other draft ideas for the for the cover, and it seemed to make sense. And it really ties in with what I was talking about before about the about interpreting music in more of a conceptual way, and thinking of light and shade or shape and color. And so the cover here just being this abstract form of these different 
shades of yeah. green and um you know and so I, I kind of thought that's a nice way to convey the the hopefully the outcome of having read the book you can interpret music in a more open and liberal way yeah man, I, t I totally agree and you know for me i was looking at it and i really liked the energy within the image you know, it right. felt like it was all from the same harmonic background, sort of the same sonic sort of area, but the energy within the picture was really good. It kind of works really well with the content of what you've managed to put down. So this um, jazz improvisation basic training is very cool. And th there's um, the actual contents list for people at home who want to have a quick look, a sneaky peek. Um, I know that we've had a quick chat about this before and that actually by the end of the book and after people have had chance to work through various issues, it's the triads and the bebop scales with a bit of chromaticism, which are the very exciting bits because that's where you're starting to pick different colours and different palettes and almost like an artist putting things together. So um, do you feel like taking us a bit through the, how the book works in your mind? Well, yeah, I think um, you kind of articulated it pretty well there. So the, the earlier chapters are there just to offer a foundation of understanding and then later in the book you, you have... Um, a slightly more freeing, um, but there, there's an, there are offerings of slightly more freeing methods to improvising, and it's it's quite a common thing in in areas of groove-based music where you'd be offered or you'd be given one chord to play over for yeah. however many bars, you know, um, like you wouldn't even think of it as like as a number of bars. It could be just you play openly for about yeah. five minutes, and so to generate ideas. Um, in that kind of context can be particularly challenging. So you need things that are outside of just basic choices of scale types to, to call upon. And, and so um, I've, I can remember the first time that I was um, taught using triad pairs or just using triads um, as a means of adding color to your playing and generating some interesting ideas. It, for whatever reason, I, I was really drawn in by them. And, it's, and I think it's because they're such simple things in terms of their a harmonic structure. It's such a fundamental thing. So, you know, anyone who plays an instrument can at least understand what it is. Yeah. And then when you begin to discover that there are, you know, different triads that stem from different degrees, from each degree of a scale or a mode, and when you begin um, basing your ideas around them and the different inversions, it, it offers you this um, a very kind of broad and very open intervallic sound and when you use them as a bridge in between other language, perhaps like blues or pentatonic, um, it just sounds particularly expressive and um, it's a very streamlined, it, it really streamlines the way in which you think, yeah. I think. Um, I, I love the way that you've absolutely tapped into the problem of uh, jazz or improvisation in general. It's like, I think there's a lot of musicians out there who are great, you know, they're really getting into it and it's actually really easy to get into a, a chord sequence or a change with lots of changes. But it's very difficult for a musician to be able to play over a, a static chord line and, you know, to, for them to be able to create something, develop something organically and use those color palettes that you've been talking about in the book, I think is uh, where this is going to come into its own. So, you know, it, it's cracking. We, we love it here at Big Bang Music. And I think, you know, I speak for everybody in saying that the importance of good educational material or good source material is vital and so I'm hoping that you know the people out there who are watching this will think oh interested in this and want to get in touch and have a look is there anything that you might have planned for the future with uh, the, a next level of where you're taking this yeah um, I'm planning and working on some video content some tuition videos that correspond to the book cool. so the idea would be that you'd have uh, a tuition video that um, would kind of delve into, the, I suppose, reiterate the points made in the book, but I'd be, you, you'd see me playing through certain exercises and, and talking more about them. And I suppose then um, elaborating on the, the use of the content outside of the book, so how you could then go about applying it in other aspects of music, which is the entire point. And I think it's something that I want to distinguish, um, not distinguish, but something that I really wanted to communicate in the book is that it's, this book isn't necessarily an archive of material for you to then take and play on a tune. It's it's to give you an understanding to then create your own ideas. So yeah, um, I suppose the the video lessons will be a way of me to communicate that further. Um, and so uh, 
yeah, so that that will be like the next stage of this of this project. I think that would be amazing because the benefit of this, uh, although we say it's you know jazz um, training, it's really it's not, is it? It's more about developing your ability to adapt this sort of material to whatever environment you want to play in. So we know a yeah. lot of musicians that are out there, they'll be in pop bands, they'll be in reggae bands, they'll be ska bands, they'll be in like grunge indie bands, they'll be, you know, this material is relevant, not just to sax players, but to people who want to create language, which is really aware and conscious of its, uh, of its palette, its colour. So, uh, you know, I, I urge everybody to get involved and have a look at this. It's been an absolute pleasure having John on the call today. And we think this um, introduction into jazz training is absolutely essential. And we really like the way that it, it transcends just a genre and it's going to be useful in any different um, artistic environment. And I know John is prolific on social media. And if you are interested, it would be a great idea to follow him on his Insta so that you can keep up to date and abreast with everything that goes on. John, have you got your Instas there? Uh, yes, it's just so at J Waff Saxophone. Very cool. Very simple. And, you know, if you're interested in this book or this material, you know, where Tom's going to show you a quick screen of where you can get this through Big Bang Music. So the book is available uh, as an ebook or actually as a physical copy. And if you're interested and you get in touch with us, uh, let me know because I'm sure John will be able to do some signed copies for the very first ones that want to uh, get a, a copy of the book. And thanks very much for joining us today. It's been a fantastic um, afternoon and we wish John a great 2021 and lots of success. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.